Welcome back to episode 6 of my Let's Play Kerbal Space Program Beta Career Mode. And last episode, if you remember, I rebooted things just in order to really do the start right. I was doing it terrible, terribly. Um, we are now got a couple of hundred science left and we've got 80,000 Kerbin dollars. Not Kerbal dollars. Co yeah. I really need to know what they're called. I'm too lazy to look it up. Um, yes, so we need to actually power our way through so that we can start to upgrade some of these buildings and get some of the really, really nice upgrades. And to do that, we're primarily going to concentrate on contracts. So in the contracts, there are some that are very much worth doing. Um, one of them is the Rockomax, uh, or anything that's orbiting, test, uh, testing in orbit. You'll notice its completion gives me $40,000. 92 science. And similarly, this one down here, the small gear bay. $45,000, there or thereabouts. 107 science. Both of those sound great. Um, so let's take them. Um, this one is actually just a landing gear. Um, apparently, we need to test it in orbit because that's where we land things. Yeah. So let's take that, and let's take the Rocket Max 487S, which you're probably thinking, what on earth is a Rocket Max 487S? So let's take those two contracts. We get some money initially, not that much. Uh, the rest is dire. So if you look in our assembly bay, I've got my rocket here, which is just the one I think that I previously had. Uh, I can't remember if I did anything between the episodes. Sorry about that one, but I think it is. Uh, it's a basic rocket. And a, a Rockamax 487S uh, is here. Unfortunately, I don't think I actually have it. Um, hang on. I think it's because I looked at it and assembled something off camera. So it is it is actually showing up, but I just don't have it. So we need to actually uh, get that particular bit of research. There it is. It also happens to include the external fuel duct, which is going to be very, very, very handy. Well worth actually grabbing. So let's grab that one. And we also want the landing gear down here at the bottom. That is small gear bay, and there's a landing strut as well, but the small gear bay is the one we want. So we spent 100, 180000 to get us into the 90 tier. And as you notice, even though I have um, this one unlocked, the next one up, I can't research any technologies over 100 science because that's the limit of this um, this building. And unfortunately, the upgrade is 510,000 bucks. Yes. Um, one of the first ones I'm gonna want is obviously the... Um, am I gonna want that one? Yeah, I'm gonna want the tracking station next, I think. Uh, space blank hangar I don't care about. Um, um, yeah, we're not going to go back to that one. And fine. Yeah, so definitely going to be their tracking station. So I'm going to need to get to $140,000 somehow. Or at least beyond that, beyond that much. So let's see what we can do with this uh, horrible, horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible rocket. Or basic rocket. Here's our Rocket Max 487S. So if we take off everything below the orbital stage, this bit, here is our LV909, the trusty thing we got right at the start of the game. Let's replace it with a 487S. Hmm. <laughs> yep, this thing is tiny. But to give you an idea, however, um, it doesn't actually tell you on there. Uh, here we are. Max thrust is 30. The LV-909 is 50. So it's not that much worse considering that it's tiny. In fact, it's almost perhaps worth thinking about attaching multiple of those things. But for now, I'm just going to leave the one. It's cheaper and uh, I want to save as much money as possible. So if we go and attach this, you'll notice you get this kind of... Yeah. <laughs> it's not the best effect in the world. And uh, it doesn't particularly look stable. There's nothing connecting those two. Hmm. Anyway, let's just leave the real, uh, reality of the situation out of things, and let's move on to something like 
the small gear bay. Now, um, you'll notice the bottom left, I have this in, uh, well, let's change the hexagonal mode just so I got the right. There we go. Fix steps around the uh, surface instead of the smooth version. It's just so that I can align things roughly right with the, uh, the symmetry of the thing. And if I press X, um, I gonna put one on each side just to make sure I know that looks weird <laughs> don't condemn me yet uh... yeah maybe that should be okay I hope and we right click on them and we can uh, start them retracted which is exactly what we want. I don't think it actually models them, but if it, if it did, <laughs> it'd be interesting trying to get it up into orbit with wheels out like that. Um, right. I think that's good. So, yes, this is our robot tester. So, the idea of this is any contract that you want, just build a rocket like this. It has the main engine down here at the bottom, LVT-45, two of the Mark 55 radials. And then it has a couple of boosters on the side. It's just about enough to get us up, up into orbit if you watch it. You know, I can um, probably design something a little bit better to get us up into orbit. And is that off center? It is off center. That's terrible. Hopefully that's better. All right. So let's just sort out our staging. We want the two outside to fire and then the inside rocket to fire at the same time as the separator goes off those two don't go off together and then finally yeah to return okay yeah we can save that um i'm not sure i wanted to overwrite the original oh well what do we have for crew who do we have oh, i have no one that i want to actually put in this thing i need to actually i don't need and let's leave Jebediah in there for now. And launch. So again, the idea of this thing is we just get into orbit, which I'm going to hope I can do without actually um, getting things wrong, which is what I end up doing anyway. So SAS on and just the usual kind of launch. Although, I probably want to start doing a bit more advanced than just going straight up until 10k. Um, you can start to curve over a little bit, and kind of as you head towards 10k, you can continue that curve off into 45 degrees or so. Um, this will help a great deal more, perhaps when I have Mech Jeb installed, but I don't have that yet. Jebedi's loving it though. Look at him. Yeah! I'm slightly, slightly off, what we said, but our first stage is about to run out. Any moment. And... That didn't go well. Whoops. <laughs> I swear that hasn't happened before. Let's try that again, this time without full throttle on the main rocket. I really should put separators on these things. You know, the little tiny rockets that should take the um, rocket boosters away. That's probably a good idea. Don't want to kill Jebediah. Let's see if we can make this work a little bit better. Let's just avoid the the the, um, the shallow curve and just go straight up. Um, that might be better for the uh, might be better for my survivability in this uh, in this episode. Uh, maybe I'll put a little bit of throttle on there. Hopefully, this isn't going to kill me again. 
maybe it was moving those rockets, uh, the the engines, I should say, to, to make them symmetric. Maybe it works when they're symmetric. When it w works, then they're not symmetric. Uh, we'll see shortly. And just counting down, our fuel's about to run out. There we go. See, that's not hard. Put back a little bit just until I'm over 10k and begin to turn over now there we are 10k I just want to get a stable at kind of a 45 degree angle stable and let's look at the map so we need an apoapsis of around well Apoapsis and periapsis of around just over 86k, I think, is what we should be aiming for. Um, our fuel this stage only is not too great, but let's see how far we get. Slow down a little bit. And 87, let's see how far that actually gets us. Of course, it's going to pull in a little bit. We can always use little tiny, little tiny bursts of thrust to actually change things. But it's not coming back too far, so I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Yeah. So if we then exit the map view. We're pretty unwieldy, unfortunately, because we've still got most of the rocket here. But we won't have that for much longer, because if you look at the fuel at the bottom left, I have almost nothing left, which is fine. Uh, let's just see how far we are. Let's just accelerate a little bit. And... Just want to push us over just a little bit more. And fire our engines. Or at least the last of the engine uh, fuel. And there he goes. At which point we can get rid of the stage. And expose our tiny little rocker max. Does what other engines can't. Or does what other engines can. But just in a very, very small way. Now all I've got to hope is that I've got this right. <laughs> uh, we should have enough fuel. If you look at the top right, we've got tons of fuel, it looks like. And our orbital path, or our suborbital path, is actually extending, which is what we want. I may have to bring us down from the, um, the apoapsis a little bit just to test the equipment, but that's okay. Just looking for orbit at the moment. Starting to move, which is what we want. We wanted to see it flip around, or at least halfway flip around to get circular-ish orbit. Although I usually end up with eccentric orbits, you know, really odd orbits, just because I'm I'm not really caring too much at the moment. But there it goes. And 78, 79, 80. Okay, 84, 900. So for most of the orbit, it should be fine. If I then go and look at my altitude, um, what's probably going to happen is I'm going to need 86 to 92. Uh, so I can test the small gear bay now, hopefully. We can just go in and... Lower the gear. Oh, no. No, that wasn't what I wanted. Uh, I'm actually out of, out of the range of the orbit now. Raise the gear. It's actually the test option I wanted, but uh, I waited a little bit too long. So, now i just got to accelerate things a little bit.
Yeah, my perfectly circular orbit takes us out to 300,000 <laughs> meters above the planet. It's not important. It, 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 we're in orbit. Leave it alone. There is nothing to see here. Move along, move along. And we want 95, so... Approaching that now, so let's just leave this view. Zoom in a tad, and we're at 96. Five. So if I run the test, that's the first one got, which gives us some money, hopefully. And the next one, we're just waiting for us to come down under 92.9, and then we can... Uh, oh, oh, damn. Uh, yeah, I think I've done that wrong. I think... Oh, no, I have a run test option. Ha! Ah! So yeah, I can just run the test. I don't need to actually fire it at the particular altitude, which is good, which is exactly what we want. So now I've got two completed contracts and uh, yeah, that's that's 30 and 45. So mm, all I need to do now is come down. Um, am I going to bother with Why did I leave a science junior on this thing? I have no idea. Anyway, um, retrograde. And then I, all I need to do is just come home, which is something you've seen lots of times before. Not going to bother with boring you with that. I'll see you back on the ground. So here we are on the ground, and I really actually should have recorded the the, the descent. Um, I kind of landed on the side of a mountain, which, as you might imagine when I don't have any landing legs, didn't end too well, and I ended up rolling down the entire side of the mountain, destroying everything apart from the command capsule. So thankfully, Jeb is now slightly blended, but is otherwise okay so <laughs> that's pretty good so yeah we've got again back up to 250 science we've now got nearly hundred and seventy thousand dollars which will be very useful uh, I'm surprised jeb didn't get any xp gain i mean after all he did roll down on the side of a mountain um so yeah in theory i could just buy this and that would be fine but what i probably want to do and i'll do this off camera is just look at a few more missions if there's something possible to, for example, that poodle engine. That's uh, that's um, no, nah, that's an in-flight one. That's annoying. So is that one? Position satellites. Uh, that's a bit annoying without the ability to have maneuver nodes, which is what we need next. Yeah, none of these are particularly good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle through them. I'm going to reject them until I get something good. And then I'm going to do that off camera until I have enough to go and uh, buy that upgrade. At which point I'll come back and then we'll then look at maneuver nodes. Back in a minute or half an hour or so. And with only a single mission, I'm now above $354,000. And 444,000 signs. How did that happen? Well, let me show you what it asked me to test. Uh, if I can recall it. Uh, yeah, here we are. Here's the Franken rocket. <laughs> this is utterly terrible. I'm so sorry. But um, <laughs> it wants me to test this engine, which is just huge. I mean, look at it by comparison to the crew module. Um, and I didn't have enough science to unlock all of the other crew modules and other stuff at the time. Or at least uh, I didn't want to. So, yeah, the rocket it wanted me to test was the skipper. And we need, I actually needed another skipper to get it into orbit. And these huge boosters, the SR, SRBs, the S1s. This whole thing here wobbles, so I could put, you know, struts on it, all kinds of other stuff. But, hey, it made it, and uh, it did the job, which is what you want. And that was like 170,000 uh, credits, or whatever they're called. So, yeah, very, very handy to actually do. That means I can now upgrade... Finally, the tracking station, uh, which, you know, does a very good job. That's, that's one of our satellite missions. But we want the upgrade to add maneuver nodes, or at least, hopefully, add maneuver nodes. Uh, well, there goes that. And what's the next upgrade? Unknown object tracking. Yeah, that's $800,000. 
That's not going to happen anytime soon. And neither's that. Neither's that. That might happen. Uh, I could get really huge amounts of science that way. Not sure. I'm kind of limited by science at the moment with the uh, the problem that I can't get anything that's at actually 100 science or more. But with 444, that does mean I can pretty much buy out all the rest. So I can buy you and you and you. Now we're blocked. Um, we can't get any further in our tree without actually unlocking um, the next level of this building, which happens to be 500,000. That allows us to collect surface samples. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Do we have anything that is silly huge amounts of money now? I wonder. Um, nope. 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 The satellites in orbits, they're generally a nice amount of money. Look at that. Um, that's a tundra orbit called near orbit. That's 242,000. So we definitely want to figure out how to do those. Exploring the moon. Uh, that would be good. And so would that. That's a stack decoupler when orbiting Gerbin. That might be uh, useful. There's a rescue mission. Uh, he's stuck in low Earth orbit, and that is one of the things you need maneuver nodes for really to really help out with that kind of thing. So we're definitely going to look at that one. No, and that's it. So pretty much it's going to be specific orbits, um, maybe exploring the moon, and more testing. And this one... Well, we can take seven and this... Does this expire? Uh, it expires in a day or so. Let's look at what the TR2, TR2V looks like. It's probably going to be the, the the bigger upgrade, or the bigger cousin of the, uh, the, the smaller stack decoupler. We've now got RCS, which is going to be fun. Uh, linear RCS port, that's fine. Stabilizers. Where is my stack decoupler? TR2V. No? Hmm. I bet it's going to be one of those that I need 100 science for. This is how Kerbal Space Program decides to work. It's like, you you get so far, can you get any more? Oh, I can't even see what's in there. Oh, great. Um, if it was here, it would be in this one, I think. And it's not. So it's probably going to be that one. Actuators. I could see into it. That's, a, that's annoying. Yeah. That's a shame. Anyway, that does mean we are going to have to master orbits, but probably not with this. Uh, it, it, oh, it's horrible. New. So what are we going to do for orbits? Well, hmm, I now have the inline cockpit, so I could use the... Uh, they're definitely for aircraft, but I don't have to use those kind of things. Um, okay, so if I wanted an, on, on a satellite, I could start with one of these. Uh, do you remember when I used the Stay Picnic? Um, or at least I think I did that off camera. Um, what I did try to do with it was get the crew reports. It doesn't have any crew, which is a bit of a shame. That doesn't really work out too well. So instead, this one, and also it doesn't have SAS. This one does have SAS, the Octo. So we can place that on the top, and probably we're not going to actually do anything with it once it's out of there. Let's have a look at our, um, before we continue with that, let's have a look at these satellites it wants us to put in orbit. Ideally, we want something equatorial that's easy to put up there, basically. Um, mission uh, contracts. So, Tundra orbit and Colnia orbit. Ugh, both of their inclinations are like 60, 63 degrees. Yeah, probably easier to see this if we just go to the tracking station. It should show you there. So, <laughs> believe it or not, that's not actually an, e <laughs> an easy orbit to get into. 
<laughs> or at least not for me. I kind of like something, you know, running this way <laughs> as opposed to this way. Uh, if I remember rightly, by the way, the Inter International Space Station runs on a, a pretty inclined orbit like this. Um, I think that's 50 odd degrees, 59 maybe, something like that. Um, the easiest thing to get into orbit is the equatorial stuff. So just literally over the equator, just heading straight east. Well, you could go straight west, but you know, straight east uh, saves the most fuel. Um, and these highly inclined orbits um, obviously means that... Um, well, in the case of the real uh, International Space Station, it was really a compromise between what you could uh, the, the the takeoff inclination that they could get from um, from the launch pad and where Russia's uh, launch pad is to get stuff up there because they stopped the space shuttle program, which although it was perhaps a good idea, um, it's a shame because everyone likes the space shuttle. No one dislikes the space shuttle. No one. So yeah, I'm gonna probably mission hunt until I can get something that's a little bit easier for me starting off with uh, maneuver nodes. Back in a moment. So here we've got a couple of missions that it's given us and I've done some more off camera but um, yeah I wanted to demonstrate one here. The one I did off camera was at Minmus. Uh, we're going to come to that on camera a little bit later. Um, you can see it at, all the way out there though. There we go. But what uh, what have we got here? We've got um, a couple of missions that um, are asking us to do specific orbits, i.e. we're going to put a satellite in these orbits. So, um, this this one here, this uh, Kerbin 17 million, <laughs> Kerbin world first record keeping society, seems like a good target to actually get to. Um, it is orbiting west to east, which is nice. Sometimes they go the opposite way, and that's horrid if you if you don't remember. When, by the time you get there, then you're going the wrong way. Um, so, yeah, that, that's around Kerbin. Let's see what, what contract that is. That's the one, I think. So we need an unmanned probe, power on an antenna, and reach that orbit and stay there for 10 seconds without moving. Don't pass through it. $121,000. As you can see, I'm up to 493 now. Um, that was doing that Minimus mission. I did it off camera. Uh, let's take this one. So I built a, a ship that was able to get out to all the way out, out to the tiny, tiny moon of Minimus. Um, and here it is. I mean, it's, there's nothing special going on here. Uh, at the top, we've got our Octo with an antenna, followed by some solar panels and some rechargeable battery packs. Um, tiny engine with a fuel tank, some more fuel, and these typical Rocco Max boosters. Can't go for the large ones in this, um, but this should do us to get up into orbit at least. And from there, we can look at... Um, uh, we can look at changing our orbit to the one we want. So, uh, we can launch. And I'll see you when I get to orbit. Okay, so we're not quite at orbit yet, but this is a good point to, to illustrate our maneuver nodes. So, um, we're going to go from here and create by dragging the prograde icon at circular orbit. And that will flip us to a, so, well, maybe a little bit less than that, actually. Uh, 69, 70, a bit more. Yeah, there we go. So that's in a minute or so. Uh, my fuel situation is quite low, so I'm probably gonna burn a little bit now, or at least, um, actually, I'm going to try and tilt the uh, the rocket. It may take a little bit of time to get there. Um, yeah, that's a slow, slow turn. I could disable. I could get rid of the stage at this point, but um, may as well use this fuel up.
try and slow down as we approach the blue icon, the maneuver node in the nav ball at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to power up. We're about to lose fuel. And we can say bye bye to that. So we're gonna probably have to burn for a quite a bit way, uh, quite a long time by comparison to the other engines. So this is why I started early. We've got 15 seconds before I should have started burning, but in this case, this engine is tiny amount of thrust, so we don't want to, you know, overdo it. As you can see, Delta V is coming down. And there we go, we just hit the node. 35 seconds left of the burn. And our fuel is fine. The real question is, will this rocket get us out to that orbit? Let's hope so. And we can bring our throttle back. Now, let's go back to the map, and yeah, well, we're not quite there. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah, we're in a little bit. Cool. So, <laughs> this is where we need to get to. How are we going to get there? Well, there's a few ways of doing it. One of the ways that I actually want is to tilt the orbit. Um, and this is easier done on a few different, well, the, the apoapsis and periapsis are in line, which is a good thing, but I do want to actually tilt the orbit first, so... Doing that easily, something... I'm not sure exactly what the, whether it's worthwhile doing, oh... Get rid of the view. So I can tilt the orbit using the normal and anti-normal things, and you can do that with uh, your mouse. As you can see, oop, you've got to hold your mouse over. See, I can tilt it both ways. Like this. But that's not doing what we actually want. We want to go tilt this way. And that's 648 meters per second of delta V. Now, is that enough? Should we just extend the orbit first? Hmm. I think we're going to tilt it first. So, and I could be doing this entirely wrong, by the way. Uh, I'm sure there are fuel savings doing this at particular points. Um, in fact, if I just quit it and put it there instead. Wrong way. Yeah, it should do. So we're four minutes away, so let's just um, zoom in a little bit and accelerate time. Oops, helps if I actually align with the uh, with the node first.
There we go, so that's 30 seconds of burning. Which is quite a lot, unfortunately. Probably say by doing this one, I actually was heading up from the surface of the planet. But I forgot. There we go. Yeah, that's roughly right. And now, well, now my, now my apoapsis uh, is different. What I want to do probably is, first of all, get rid of this node and create one at this side. And we're going to extend that out. Which is fine, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's still off a little bit. There we go. And then we can also use the... I forgot what these nodes are. Anti-radial? Radial, maybe? Use that to move the... The, um... The apopsis around a little bit. But not too much. That that'll do for now. So that's seven hundred meters per second. So we've got a, another burn to make in about a minute. Uh, this time I will actually remember to point at the node first. Um, there we go. And about 20 seconds to go. Yeah, I mean, the burn's about right. So as you can see, our current orbit, which is in blue, is increasing. The apoapsis is heading out there. Mm, we're about to hit half fuel, unfortunately. So how am I going to have enough fuel to do this, I wonder? Hopefully I am. There we go. So let's quit this and then hopefully try to do the same thing at this side. Add a maneuver. And... That's going to be off. That's unfortunate. I drag these to move it. Whoops. Ah. This is just using the scroll wheel, by the way. It allows a little bit more of a fine control than dragging. Which is what we want. Hopefully that is going to be close enough if I can make it. Well, it looks to be exact. That's 573, that should be enough. So if I align myself again. Where are you at? No, too far. Here we go. Yes, yeah, so we're aligned, so we should be able to accelerate up. Just don't go too fast. I have, uh, well, it just shouldn't matter in this case. I can just go around again if I go too fast. But um, when some intercepts, you don't want to try that. So. seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, that was lucky. 
<laughs> that was very lucky. <laughs> but hopefully we've got enough fuel to make it. And if we do, that should give us quite a bit more cash for us to do other things. And... Is that close enough? Can I get the contract? Main stability for 10 seconds. There we go. Contract complete. So we got 121,000. And we got 200 science. And for Minmus 1, I got I double that. So, that's pretty good for this episode. We've gone from not having maneuver nodes to having them. Um, sending something up and creating orbits. Initially around, obviously, Kerbin. And... Um, I'll probably introduce something with the Mun or with Minmus next, because you may want to see those on camera as well. They're a little bit more complicated. I just want to keep things uh, fairly straightforward in this episode. Um, the the reason why they're complicated is, unlike these these satellite missions, you've got to get you've got to arrive at the right time to be captured by Minmus. Minmus is a tiny target, unfortunately. Uh, the, the Mun is is actually a much larger and easier target to get to, just harder to get back. From, but we'll come into that one as well so for this episode this is episode six thanks very much for watching if you like this episode feel free to leave a like or dislike if you didn't like it but please tell me why otherwise if you'd like to subscribe feel free to subscribe below but um yeah if you're already subscribed by welcome and um i'll probably head to some minecraft next for the next video uh next video in the kerbin series of uh, kerbal series i should say is probably going to be planetary stuff um yeah I think it's probably time to go and see if we can make a moonshot, at least to do free return trajectories. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.